In part 4, we discuss how God enables us to perfect or grow in holiness as He works in us by His Spirit, His Word and through His divine discipline. Consecration is our cooperating with God's working in us to perfect holiness in us. We also discuss some destroyers of holiness and how to guard against these. The last few weeks we've been talking about the holiness of God. And I want to just quickly uh, review a few things we've covered uh, the last three Sundays and take it forward from where we stopped. As we began this study on the holiness of God, we emphasize this looking at God's nature, that the core aspect of God's nature is that God is holy. God is sinless, absolute purity. God is a holy God. And every other aspect of God's nature is undergirded by holiness. Which means that God in his goodness will never do anything that violates his holiness. God in his love will not do anything that violates his holiness. God in his mercy will not do anything that violates his holiness. Every facet of God's nature is undergirded by holiness. It's core to who he is. It's to his nature. And we also saw that in heaven... As he is worshipped, there's only one attribute that is proclaimed in this manner. Holy, holy, holy. We don't see, you know, good, 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 love, 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 joy, joy, joy. You know, there's this one aspect of God's nature that is proclaimed this way. Holy, holy, holy. Emphasizing uh, God's holiness that, that's pervasive. It's, it fills everything about him. And we saw that our God is, is so holy that everything about him is holy. His angels are holy. His dwelling place is holy. Uh, their holiness adorns his house. And the only way that we have access into the holiness of God is through the atonement. It's the atonement that makes the unclean clean. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that gives us access into the presence of such a holy God. Because we in ourselves don't qualify. But it's because of the blood that has cleansed us, made us clean, and God has given us his righteousness, we have access into his holiness. And last Sunday, we talked about, in part three of this message, we talked about his holiness in me. So every aspect of God's nature, he wants it reproduced in us. God is love, so he teaches us to walk in love. Similarly, God is holy, so he teaches us to walk in Holiness. He tells us, be holy, for I am holy. So how does God's nature of holiness get reproduced in us so that we can then be like him in this aspect? How can we walk in holiness? And so we began that, talking about that last Sunday. Uh, we said that really, you know, God does this work for us. He says, I am Jehovah Nekadesh. I am the Lord, your sanctifier. So this is very different. He doesn't say, guys, you go get yourself fixed and then come to me. None of us will be, ever be able to approach God because we can't fix ourselves. But he says, I am the Lord, your sanctifier. I will work in your life to sanctify you, which is to make you holy. God says, I will do that in your life. And we see the provision he has made uh, in order to start that process in us. First of all, the provision was made on the cross. Where Jesus Christ broke the power of sin over our lives. So when Jesus died on the cross, many things happened. He took the penalty of sin so that we could be forgiven. He also took our sin so we could be made righteous. But he also broke the power of sin so that we could be free from the dominion of sin. So that's why Paul says in Romans 6... Sin will not have dominion over me. So as believers, we start off with that truth that God has made a provision. God has made a way for me, for you to live victorious over sin because he broke the power of sin on the cross. So when we receive that truth, it then liberates us. Hey, I'm not struggling to overcome sin. 
God broke its power. So now I can live free from sin. I walk in the finished work that Christ has done for me. So he broke the power of sin. The second thing God does in, in order to enable us to walk in holiness is that he changes us on the inside. If any man is in Christ, he becomes a new Christian. So he says, you believe in Christ, you come to Christ, I make you brand new on the inside. So this is so powerful, as we pointed out last Sunday, so different from all the other kinds of philosophies and ideologies that are there, where most of what we hear is, you make yourself good. But here God says, I will make you a new creation. I'll make you a new creation. I'll change you on the inside. And then that works out into other facets of our lives. So this is the provision God has made. He makes us new creation. The new person that you become on the inside, the Bible says, is, is made in the image of God. It's made in righteousness and true holiness. That means your inner person has the capacity to walk in righteousness and holiness. So as believers, here are two truths with which we view sin. One, sin's power over my life has been broken. Two, I am a new creation. This new person is created in righteousness and holiness. So as I walk in that, I'm being set up to walk into a life of holiness. You with me so far? So what we do, our response is saying, God, I want to be sanctified completely. Every area of my life, I want it to be sanctified to you. Start with my thoughts, my words, my deeds. Let them be holy to you. With my affections, my appetites, my desires, let them be holy to you. With my hopes and dreams and aspirations, let them be holy to you. Let them be sanctified. With my time, my talents, my money, let that be sanctified. With my children, my home, my family, my possessions, let that be sanctified. So what do we do? Our response is, God, we, we welcome your work of sanctification into every area of our lives. Because you are the Lord who sanctifies us. You with me so far on this? Yes? All right. So we want to take, pick this up from here now. And we want to talk about... This morning, perfecting holiness. How, do it, how does God work in us to perfect holiness in us? So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. We'll start off from this verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. The Apostle Paul writes here, he says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved... Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Therefore, having these promises. What promises is he referring to? Back up in chapter 6, you'll find the promises he's referring to. In the verses that, that are towards the end of chapter 6, he says, God says, I will be your God. You will be my people. You are the temple of God. I will dwell among you. I will walk among you. You will be my sons and daughters. So these are the promises he's referring to. And he says, brothers, you know, having received these kinds of promises from God, what should our response be? Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness. The word filthiness are stains. You see, in the morning you get up, you wear a nice clean, you know, nice clean clothes. That he go out to the day and, you know, all the dust in the city and he do all kinds of things. It's quite possible there are stains that come on. Things that happen that dirty your clothes. Now think about it in a more spiritual sense. As we go to the, through our daily lives in this world, both our outer man and our inner person can get stains. So he says, cleanse yourself. Wash it clean. Get rid of it. Cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. Outer man and the inner person. The outer man has to do with our deeds, our words, our act, things that we say and do in our body. At the inner spirit, referring to filthiness of the spirit, things are attitudes, hate and anger, jealousy and pride and, and lust and all kinds of things that, that, that are filthiness of the inner man. He says, cleanse yourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. And do this out of the fear of God, out of reverence for God. So that's our response that he's inviting us. He says, I want to come and do this. You know, God's given us these great precious promises, but here's our response. Let us cleanse ourselves. 
So how does God enable us in this process of cleansing ourselves of these things? I want to talk about three important things we see in scripture. Number one is this, the empowering of his Holy Spirit. So God empowers us with his Holy Spirit to live a life of holiness. Now this might seem redundant, but in Romans chapter 1 and verse 4, the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of holiness. But that has to be obvious, it's Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Spirit of holiness. So one of the things God the Holy Spirit has come to impart to you and me and to empower us is in the area of holiness. He is the Spirit of holiness. Holy Spirit. He's come to help us in this area. So you know, all of us have weaknesses, challenges, things that we are struggling with, habits and sins, and ungodly desires, all of that. Listen, the Holy Spirit is there to help you. He's there to help you. So you ask the Spirit of God. You say, Holy Spirit, I got a loose tongue, short temper, <laughs> whatever these things that you know we all struggle with it's it's just common but the spirit of god he empowers us he is here to work holiness in you and me and all we've got to do is ask him invite him talk to him holy spirit help me in this area you know what it is what is it just be open spirit of god help me I know this area is not pleasing to God. I know this is ungodlike. So help me in this. He works that in us. And Paul writes about this, you know, and I'll just make reference to this. We don't have time to study all of it. But Romans, the seventh chapter, he talks about his struggle. Most likely he struggled before he came to know Christ. He says, you know, in my heart, I wanted to do good. In my heart, I know the law of God. I know what's right and wrong. I want to do good. But I find that every time I try, I fail because there is sin that dominates me. You know, and he's so frustrated, he says, Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this? Like he's so frustrated. He knows what's right, but he's struggling to actually do it. But then in Romans 7, the end of that, he says, But thanks be to God. Who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then we continue reading in Romans 8. He says in verse 2. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Has made me free from the law of sin and death. That means if you, if you replace the word law as dominion. You'll understand it like this. For the dominion of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ. Sets me free. From the dominion of sin and so the Holy Spirit, and if He is dominating my life, He sets me free from sin that dominates me. So what I've got to do, I have to yield to the Spirit. And so He explains this further in Galatians 5, in verse 16, He says, If you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So here's the answer. Hey, yield to the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Live in the Spirit. That means your Holy Spirit you dominate me. You come take over. Flow through this area of my life where I'm struggling. And I'm yielding myself to you. And you know what? As we learn to yield to him, we will overcome. So how does God work perfecting holiness in us? One, by the empowering of the spirit of holiness. God's Holy Spirit is here to help you and me. So talk to him about it. Holy Spirit, please help me in my words. Help me to be careful about my words. I slip up so often. Please help me. It's a simple prayer that you pray, but you're inviting him to work holiness in that area of your life. And you know what? He'll start working. He'll start working. And you'll find the transformation that he brings. The second way God works his holiness in us is through his word. The word of God, while well, does it, it does so many things. One of the things the word of God works in us is that it sanctifies us. It's like a cleansing agent. It cleans us. John 15 verse 3, Jesus said, you are clean by the words I have spoken to you. You're clean by the words I've spoken to you. Or in John 17, verse 17, he says, Sanctify them through thy truths. Thy word is 
truth. Sanctify them. That is make them holy. By thy truth. But what is truth? Thy word is truth. So how does this happen? Well, when you read the word of God. Let's say for example, I have a loose tongue. I'm reading the word of God and I, the word of God says, the tongue is like a fire. It's like the bit in the horse's mouth. It controls the entire horse. It's like the uh, rudder that directs the whole ship. And so how can you speak cursing and blessing out of the same mouth? And as I read, I say, oh God, I'm convicted by the words. Or I read the word of God which says, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your eyes. I say, oh God, my words, they're not very pleasing. So what happens? The word of God has a sanctifying effect as we read it. It begins to bring conviction in our lives. And so we go to God and pray and say, God, I know I'm not matching up to what I'm reading in the Bible. So please change me. Change my tongue. I'm just using the tongue as an example. Many of us relate to it. But there could be so many other areas of life where we need to cleanse ourselves of filthiness of flesh and spirit. And the word of God has that sanctifying effect. So that's why it's so important for us to read the Bible, read the word of God, uh, study the word. That, and that's why we emphasize, we take time on Sundays to uh, be in the word of God together because we know the effect the word of God has upon our lives. In John the 8th chapter, Jesus speaking uh, to the people there. He says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth, verse 32, and the truth will set you free. Now, what's he talking about? What freedom is he talking about? He continues in that same passage. He says, you know, I tell you the truth. Whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. So what freedom is he talking about? Freedom from sin. And he says, look, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin and a slave cannot remain in the house, but a son remains in the house. The freedom that he's talking about is freedom from sin. And he says, if you continue in my word, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You will be free from sin. You will no longer be somebody who's committing sin and falling in sin. The truth will set you free. The third way that God works perfecting holiness in us is through his discipline. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 10 and 11. Now I'll read this passage there from Hebrews 10, 12 and 11. Uh, the, the preceding verses set the context. He's talking about discipline uh, and he's uh, drawing the comparison how parents discipline children. And he's talking about how God disciplines us. And he says in verse 10, For they, that is parents, indeed for a few days chastened or disciplined us as seemed best to them. But he, for our profit, that we may be partakers of his... So why does God discipline us? So that we could grow in his holiness. And then he says in verse 11, Now no chastening or no discipline seems joyful to, for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So while we are going through discipline, it's not joyful, it's a little painful. But... There is a reward. It produces righteousness. So how does God discipline us? The primary ways is what we already talked about. He corrects us. So discipline is to lovingly correct. He corrects us by his Holy Spirit and by his words. So the moment you and I do something wrong, immediately you find something inside you saying, Hey, not right. Shouldn't have spoken like that. Shouldn't have behaved like that. Holy Spirit's correcting you. Right there. Right there. So what must we do? We must receive that discipline. Oh God, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry God. I messed up. So he's correcting you. He's doing it lovingly. The Holy Spirit is doing it right then and there. So God, I'm sorry. I messed up. Sorry. Or he also corrects us through his word. So you're reading the word and, and the word sheds light. And, 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 and you realize, God, that area of my life is not right. I'm doing something wrong. And we respond to that correction. We receive that correction. And he's doing it in order to produce holiness in us. Are you with me so far? Then God also disciplines us through other believers. So our fellow believers may come to us 
speak into our lives they correct us hey you shouldn't be doing like this it should be like that and that's another way that god brings discipline and correction in our lives and we receive that but you know if we ignore these three what i would call as the elementary levels the very basic levels of god's discipline then we go to the fourth one which is not very nice the fourth level of discipline is god permits us to reap of what we sow you know that's a law that we reap of what we sow. the moment i sow something and i realize i've done something wrong and i receive the correction that comes to me the first three ways what happens god's mercy covers that see god's mercy keeps us from reaping all the wrong we've sown amen otherwise hey, we'll all be in big trouble if we have to reap all we've sown but when god corrects us you go back and say god i'm sorry i realize i made a mistake what happens mercy covers that so we don't reap of it or the entirety of it but if if i ignore the first three then god says okay you're going to reap what you sow and then you go you and i we go through all the mess of what we've done and we face the consequences and it's a hard lesson to learn you with me so we got to be careful be willing to receive the correction that god gives to us by his word by his spirit and then even through other people receive it and then we correct ourselves okay god i received that correction i know what i made a mistake i align myself to your will now as god works in us through his word through his spirit through other people around us you know our response has to be consecration let me say a few things on this as we respond to god yield to his working that's our consecration to god leviticus 27 he says you know god says consecrate yourselves that means you are doing your part to set yourself apart to god now consecration is not always an easy process jesus described it like this in mark matthew chapter 5 verses 29 and 30 he says If your right eye causes you to sin pluck it out ouch and cast it from you for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell and if your right hand causes you to sin cut it off and cast it from you for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell now obviously it's not referring to the physical Otherwise, we'll all be blind and <laughs> no hands. So obviously, he's not talking about that. What he's talking to us about is the severity with which we have to deal with the things that cause us to sin. If there's something that's causing you to sin, deal with it with severity. and in your process of dealing with it it could be painful it's like amputation but he says doing that is profitable for you amen he says that and now we understand this in the natural you know there are some conditions some you know if somebody has a tumor you don't go put a bandaid on it if you go to the doctor he says i have to cut you i have to cut it out and that i need to do that it's got to be dealt with a level of severity or at certain certain times i need to amputate something to preserve the person we understand it in the natural but think about it in the spiritual sometimes there are things in our lives as we respond to god's dealing his word works in us his 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 spirit is working in us and god brings correction into our lives and and we want it soft and nice and easy but sometimes god says when you have to deal with sin it's got to be like this it's like plucking an eye out or cutting an arm off it's it's severity there's pain in it but it's worth going through a few weeks or a few months of that little pain so the rest of your life can be blessed somebody can say amen so that's our response our consecration so consecration to god may not always be easy may not always be joyful 
but it yields the fruit of righteousness it works so you know there could be areas in our lives sometimes it could be a dream i'm not saying you know every time you have a dream or you have a desire to do something is wrong you know, many of these things are birthed from god but if there is something that's very selfish very you know something that you want it for yourself and for your own fame and name and, and god puts his finger on that and say look that's one thing that's really taking you in the wrong direction and then letting that go can be painful it's not easy now when i there's something personal but when i closed my company down in 2014 it took me like two or three years to really let go emotionally it's like even now sometimes i think maybe i should just go back and do because i love technology i love doing that sometimes i play around with it you know but not to start a business but it 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 was so much a part of me so even though i closed the company in 2014 it took years just to i mean for it to come out of me kind of thing so i can understand that 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 there are desires there are dreams that you have and there are times when you need to when god says you've got to let go and it will be painful it's not easy it's not easy but god says okay this is what i want you to do so you've got to let go of this for you to let go of it inside you there's a struggle there's a pain that's god why or it could be something else for some of us we may god says i need you to leave this nice place you're living and move to that part of the world or that part of the and 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 do this for my sake and say so god but life is nice here is very nice no that's the call i said god but i already have this i already have that i already have this so that's the call you got to let go are you with me so various things in life various things in life when we when god says look it's not profitable you got to cut it off you got to let it go it can cause pain but that pain is worth it because it's going to produce righteousness it's going to bring that peaceable fruit of righteousness in your life and he's going to help you grow so that's our consecration and a consecration may not always be easy on a, and then there is godliness but godliness must be something beyond the externals you know psalm 51 verse 6 god says he desires truth in the inward parts you know what is god looking for he is looking for purity integrity in the inner person not just the externals sometimes we em- emphasize the externals okay you don't smoke okay you don't drink you don't chew pan <laughs> you don't do this you don't do that oh you're a nice person hey but inside they could be he could be or he or she could be very bad angry hateful jealous so on the outside everything may look great but the person on the inside could be not very pleasing so godliness i want to remind us and encourage us start with the insides start with your heart look the outside will catch up start with the heart do you love people is your heart pure get rid of pride and the filthiness of the spirit get rid of those kinds of things that inside okay because god looks for truth on the inside amen and that's what i try to do say so look if i keep my heart clean everything else will align to that I don't have to focus I don't have to worry about the outside the outside will align up to the condition of the heart what's in the heart will eventually come out a good man out of the good deposit of his heart will bring forth good things amen now in closing i want to just talk about very quickly mention some destroyers of holiness what are some things that destroy holiness you know some of us may have have made this journey Uh, on holiness and suddenly we trip up we fall or or you know there are things that destroy us and i just want to quickly mention four things here one is hypocrisy what is hypocrisy it is when we want to look good before people and we're not concerned about our heart condition before god and if i'm more concerned about how i look in front of people and i'm not focusing on my heart condition before god 
then that's hypocrisy. And if I begin unconsciously to start living life like that, I'm going to fall. Because I'm more interested in how people look at me. And I'm not bothered that God actually wants truth in the in, in, inside. I'm going to fall because that inner core, the inside, is not strong. So be careful about that. Hypocrisy is when I point out the speck in my brother's eye and I condone the log in my own eye. That's hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is when I'm more concerned about the accolades of man and not concerned about the commendation that comes from God. The second destroyer of holiness is worldliness, which is my affinity and conformity to the world's patterns. Now, there's nothing wrong in enjoying the nice things God has given to us in this world. By all means, you enjoy what God has put in this, the good things that are there. But the Bible warns us but from being a friend of the world and becoming an enemy of God. In fact, it uses strong words in James 4, 4. It uses the words adulterers and adulteresses. That's a spiritual in that sense. Meaning, I've forsaken my first covenant with God and I've gone off after something. Don't you know that friendship of the world is enmity with God? So worldliness, you've got to be careful. Always keep your love first and foremost on God and the things of God and then enjoy, you know, the good things of life that God blesses us with. Thirdly, it's strife. Hebrews 12, 14 says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which anyone, no one will see the Lord. Notice how he puts the first thing. Have peace with all people. So strife robs us of holiness. I get angry with people, get into strife, cannot walk holy. Because I'm angry, I say things and do things out of strife. It robs us of holiness. So always keep your relationships with people right. The last one I want to mention here, in the same chapter of Hebrews 12, if you give priority to natural desires, he's talking about Esau, Hebrews 12 verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his whole birthright. Can you imagine this? You see, there's nothing wrong with being hungry. And there's nothing wrong with being very hungry, like most of us are right now. <laughs> and there is nothing wrong in being very, very, very hungry. But please, in order to satisfy your hunger with one bowl of food, don't sell, don't give up this whole life of holiness that you're pursuing. That means... In order to satisfy a legitimate natural desire. Hunger is a legitimate natural desire. Nothing wrong with that. He is hungry. Natural. Legitimate desire. But in order to satisfy a legitimate natural desire. He gave up his whole birthright. And you know what harsh words. He's a fornicator and a profane person. It's like he's. Like, worse than stupid. <laughs> Profane person. To sell his entire birthright for a bowl of food. So be careful. We all have natural desires. They are legitimate. But in order to satisfy a natural desire, don't sell. Don't compromise on your life of holiness. Amen? So, in closing, God has called us to perfect holiness. He empowers us by His Spirit, by His Word, and through His loving correction to work holiness in our lives. Our response is consecration to God. Consecration sometimes can be painful, but it's profitable. Focus on godliness in the heart. Not just the outside. You start with the heart. The outside will align itself. And guard yourself against things that destroy holiness. Hypocrisy, worldliness, strife. And putting 
legitimate natural appetites ahead of your spiritual goal. Amen? Let's rise for a few please. As we take a few moments to pray, I want you to just respond to the word that we heard this morning and, and say, God, help me to cleanse myself of all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit so that I can perfect holiness in the fear of God. God is holy. He's called us to be holy. This is a process. It's not a switch we turn on and off. It's a process. But we must work with God. And Father, we pray that each of us, the Lord, will be willing to work with you. Be open to the work of your spirit. Be open to your work of your word. And the correction that comes through other people you've placed around us, God. So that we can Grow in holiness. We can be partakers of your holiness in our lives. Father, I just pray for those of us who need to consecrate areas of our lives to you. That even if it's painful, God will do it. That we will say yes and amen. We will say yes to your call. And God will be willing to pluck out and cut off things that are causing us to sin. And Holy Spirit even now have come upon those areas of our lives that need to be cut off, that need to be plucked out. So we can consecrate ourselves unto the Lord our God. We thank you Lord. Before this, we close this morning, I just want to give an invitation to anyone here. If you've never received Jesus Christ into your heart, into your life, but you feel you'd like to do that this morning, right where you are standing, I'd like to give an invitation, an opportunity to pray and say, Jesus, make yourself real to me. Come into my heart, come into my life. The Bible says that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Anyone can do this. Those of you watching us live online, right where you are, you're welcome to pray with me right now. If you want to give your heart to Jesus, just pray this with me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. Make me a new person. Help me to live a life. That glorifies you. From this day. Help me to follow you. The rest of my life. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Anybody you pray this prayer with me. For the very first time. If you don't mind just raise your hand. Anybody you pray this prayer with me. For the very first time in your life. Anyone here just raise your hand. We'd like to give you a gift bag. So that you could take some resources with you. I I don't see any hand, but if, in case you did, in case you prayed with me this morning, on your way out at the exits, there'll be a greeters with a green bag. Um, just collect the bag from them, give your name and number to them, and we'll be in touch with you, teach you, or share with you how to use the contents that are there in the bag to help you grow in your faith. Let's close, please. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name, amen. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.